And we had some ladies come forward and, and say, hey, I'll help. And uh, we, we don't want to offend anybody, but we're pretty good on Sunday mornings. And so if, you're, if you volunteer for Sunday mornings, we, we may not need any help there. But again, that Sunday night, Wednesday night, that's really where we need some help, uh, again, for those nurseries. And so we, we just want to uh, be able to do that and get our ladies in service. Amen. It's uh, uh, something that they all need and, and something that we all need. So we, we'd like to be able to do that for them. And so that does it for our announcements. So we'll have some more plans. I, I, I spoke on Sunday and, and said that we have some more plans concerning Thanksgiving coming here soon. Uh, and again, we will uh, by Sunday have some of those different plans that we will be making announcements for. And so stay tuned for, for everything that's going on around that Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, we'll get some of those different things uh, laid out here very shortly. Uh, we'll move on now to our, our praises and our prayer requests as, as we've got uh, quite a few. Again.
All right, if you'll stand with me and turn to page 139, we're going to sing, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Does anyone else know a song that's got a total verse in it besides the verse songs? All right, page 139, sing the first, the second, and the fifth verse. And it's always interesting as I deal with uh, people, uh, you know, day in and, and day out. You know, I try to help as many people as I can. And uh, listen, I don't have anything to offer them uh, besides the Lord Jesus himself. Amen. That there is no wisdom of my own. There's nothing that I can give, uh, that I can claim or, or that I can be the author of. It's all his. And, and again, that's what I give to folks. But it's very interesting as you look at people and just the way that people deal with situations or people react to things. Uh, it's very interesting to, to see the trouble that, that, that comes in our lives that we bring on ourselves. Uh, it's very interesting. You think back on your life and think about some of the different things that you've gone through. I know for myself, a lot of them, I can think back to the, the root or the cause, and it was because I had not done something the right way or I had not paved things the right way or laid the foundation the right way. And that's why I had a problem, or that's why I had a mistake, or whatever you want to call it, in that area, is because I didn't handle it right in the first place. And again, that's the common theme as I, again, counsel and do some of these different things with families and people. It's just silly things that need to be laid out straight. And once you get those things right, guess what? Everything's okay. And you know, when you're in the middle of those problems, sometimes they seem big, but when you get them laid out and things are good and you've made it through, you realize that all those things, Problems are really just little things that needed corrected. They needed the Lord's intervention. And once those things are right, you know what? They're, they're just little issues. And so, again, it, it, it's interesting for us because we're human. Amen? It, it must be so different, uh, again, to experience that glory when we get to heaven and not have this, uh, this, this thinking mind inside of us, right, that, that's so corrupted and so wicked. It must be so different, right, to have that glorified body and not to have to deal with all the different things that we have to deal with here in this world. But the, the Bible gives us clear wisdom and clear instruction sometimes as far as the how to stay out of these different areas of life. So look at verse number one of chapter number seven. And again, showing us uh, just how to stay out of these different situations in life. And so we're going to read and, and again, draw an application from God's word. It says this, my son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. 
Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. Bind them upon thy fingers and write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, Thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, uh, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. And so we're going to stop right here, and, and, and we're going to go back up to the first couple of verses, but we're going to deal with a few things tonight and read on even into chapter number 8. Uh, but first of all, notice this, as, as he gives the charge again to the sons, he says, keep my words, right? And, and again, uh, we've been over this many times, as, as many of us are parents or have been parents, or at least can think back on our parents, uh, right? Giving us instruction and telling us to keep their words or, or remember these things. And I still have things in my head that I remember my dad saying, you don't understand now, but one day you will, right? And now I've got boys. And I know you don't understand now, but one day you will, right? There's a reason we don't put our hands on a hot stove. Uh, you don't understand now, but one day you will, right? When you do it and you burn yourself on that thing, and here's what happened to me. The uh, the little, uh, 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 what are they called? The little mitts. I didn't have a mitt. I had one of the pads. It was just a little square, and it slipped. And I went to grab that sheet full of, I think it was tater tots is what it was. I went to grab that sheet, and my fingers were right on that pad. Oh, man, it lights you up, right? Uh, you know why you have that pad, because it hurts, right? So you learn over time to keep these words and to keep these commandments. And again, you and I are, are, are progressing in that learning, progressing in that knowledge that hopefully as you get older, you learn from the mistakes you make and don't keep making the same mistakes over and over. And again, that's one sign of a mature Christian, right? That they learn from the mistakes that they've made. They don't keep falling back into the same things. You know, there's many people that are Christians that claim to be all kinds of things. They claim to be wise. They claim to be spiritual and, and, and all these different things. But, but I'll tell you what, if they stay in the same thing over and over and over and over, and every time they talk to you, they're caught up on the same thing, that shows immaturity. Amen? That, that, that shows that there's not a, a real deep root there that, again, it, it is causing them to learn and to grow through these situations. The Lord wants us to grow through these situations keeping God's commandments and keeping God's word as we go through them, furthering us in our walk. Can you imagine not learning anything that God had taught you? Can you imagine some of the lessons that you've been through and then having to go back and walk through them again? I think I've made reference to this before, but, but I don't want to relive some of those. I don't know about you. I don't want to go back to some of those lessons that God's taught me. There's a few that I had to learn that were hard. Uh, and I tell you what, I, I nearly didn't make them through, but because God doesn't give us above what we're able to bear, I made it through with his strength. And, and I tell you what, I don't want to go back and learn those lessons again. I'd rather learn and move on. Amen. The same way I don't want to learn algebra again. Amen. I don't, for the life of me, want to go back to a, a, a class as a freshman and learn algebra again. That, that was the worst. I don't want to do it. Amen. I'm glad I learned it. I'm through it. I never have to look back. That was what I said to myself when I graduated high school. I never have to look back. Amen. Right? No more homework. No more. But then you got to pay bills and all that. So, okay. So anyway, <laughs> But keep my commandments, right, and live. And my law is the apple of thine eye, in verse number two. As the apple of thine eye. What does that mean? That means that thing to be desired, right? I think as Christians, sometimes God's commandments become laborious, right? They, they become things that, that, that are tedious to us. In other words, it's, it's hard, or, or, or Lord, are you, are you serious? I really have to do this, and you really expect this of me? And, and it says to keep them. But not only to keep them, but as the apple in your eye. So that thing that you desire, that thing that is good in your sight, that's what God's word is. Amen? It's good. And when you think of God's word and you think of God's commandments and the different things that the Lord has laid out for us, it's good. Amen? It's, it's what we're to desire, not those things that are hard and, and not those things that are laborious. Now, now, sometimes it is hard to keep those commands, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. And you'll see through your life that the worth in keeping God's words, keep it as the apple of your eye. Because here's what happens, again, as people, uh, you've probably been window shopping or you've probably done something along those, every new thing catches your eye, right? Uh, I know as a man, maybe ladies are not like this, I can't speak for ladies, but I know as a man, uh, you can have the best truck, but next year a new truck comes out, right? Or, or you can have the best gun or you can have the best whatever it is but but every year something better comes out right and as a man uh, you know you want the best you want to have the uh, you, i know your husbands aren't like that ladies it's just me i know but but anyway so listen I, I know how that works and so here's what happens when god is not the center of everything in our life when he's not the apple of our eye 
Then we're looking out at all these different things. And here's what happened is our heart will be pulled or our heart will be tugged again to all the, the different things in our lives that will require our attention or our time. And those things are supposed to be only God and God himself. So it says this, bind them upon thy fingers, right? Write them upon the table of thine heart. Keep them, hide them inside yourself, right? Write them so that they are, again, have to have the preeminence in your life. Verse number four, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. What, now, why in the world would you say to wisdom that, that she's your sister? Here's why, because you can't get away from your sister, amen? You can't get away. Now, now you might move away, but guess what? You're still related, right? You're, you're blood, Not, nothing removes that. No matter how hard you try, uh, no matter where you go, you're still related. That blood still flows through you the same way. And then it says this in verse number four. Uh, Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister, and call understanding thy kinswoman. That kinswoman means simply related to, uh, right? So again, so, so you've got both of them on, on either side of you, uh, wisdom and understanding, that when this evil woman comes in verse number five, that they may keep from thee the strange woman, uh, from the stranger with flattereth with her words. When you've got wisdom and when you've got understanding, and, and, and this other, the, the Bible uses a picture of a woman, but when this other come, a woman comes up and uh, starts talking with flattering words and all these different things that, that feel nice on your ears, wisdom, right, and understanding, and here's the way I picture it. My, my sisters never stop talking, right? So wisdom and understanding yapping in my ears. Now, I don't have time to pay attention to this other one, right? And so that's what this understanding, that's what this wisdom is supposed to be to us is again this this voice or and, and again we know it's not a, a literal voice but but again this reminder hey whatever is coming that's not of god again is not going to be worth it in the long run and here's what you think you keep family close keep that understanding keep that wisdom close in your life i'm sure you can agree with me you need it every day amen you need wisdom every day i need wisdom three four times a day amen and and, and i need it more than some other people do, but I need wisdom continually. I don't just need it on Sunday morning. Are you, are you catching my drift? Are you picking up when I'm laying down? I don't just need it Sunday morning. I need it Sunday night. I need it Wednesday night. And guess what? I need to be in my Bible every day of my life. And so I need it a whole bunch of times. I need that wisdom, again, because when the different things in life come, I, I don't even have time for that, right? I don't have time uh, uh, for all those different things. And, and, and I, don't, I, I don't have any more to give again, to anything that's not of God already. And then the Bible's going to take it a step further, and it's going to begin to talk about this woman. And again, some of the different ways that she deceives and, and, and kind of the way that she works herself in. And, and again, I think that some passages of Scripture are harder to read than other uh, passages are. Uh, you know, you, you can't really uh, read Songs of Solomon uh, to the teenagers on a Wednesday night. You could, but you'd have to be real careful, you know, what, what direction you took it. But but again, this is one of those passages that, that again, it, it gives us a vivid picture. And so I, I hope that uh, tonight we're mature enough to understand and get through that. But again, the, the Bible gives us truth that we vitally need. And so we're going to read through and again, uh, understanding that this is a picture that the Lord is, is giving to us. It says this in verse number five, that they may keep thee from the strange woman, from the stranger which flattereth with her words. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement. Now that casement is, is just a form of a window on a hinge. Verse number seven, and beheld among the simple ones, I discerned among the youths a man void of understanding. And how many young men do you know like that? Just void of understanding. That doesn't mean stupid. Uh, that doesn't mean dumb. It doesn't mean any of the insults that we hurl around. But what it means is this, just void of understanding. They just don't know. I worked with junior hires back at Hillsboro, and, and I can testify for all the junior hires that age, they just don't know. They are just void of understanding. They wanted me to play basketball all day long, right? They, they thought I should be at every basketball game they had, every football game. They, they just don't understand all the different things that happen through a week. You've got your family, you've got work, you've got all these different, they, they just are void of understanding, right? Things should be possible, but they just don't understand all that goes on in the background. And so again, looking out, seeing this man void of understanding, there's somebody, I'll tell you this, there's somebody that takes advantage of that, that understanding, somebody that, that takes advantage of not having understanding. And we know the devil plays a major role in our world today, and he sure will, whether it's right or whether it's wrong, he'll find the ones that are void of understanding. In fact, while we're on the page of our junior hires and our high schoolers, that's probably where Satan's getting them, right there. When they're void of understanding, when they're not mature, when they're too young to really know, 
that's where he's, you know, fitting in, and that's where he's wiggling in and getting these kids off track. Look what the Bible says. It says this in, in verse number 8. Passing through the street near her corner, and he went the way to her house, and the twilight and the evening and the black and dark night. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of a harlot and a subtle heart. So here again, we, we find a, a young man who's void of understanding, the Bible says. And so he, he's just a little simple when it comes to uh, understanding good, sound wisdom, right? He's just not there in his life. What happens? Again, there's somebody out there looking for those men. There's somebody out there that's looking for those people that don't have understanding. And what happens? As soon as you pass near that alley, or as soon as you start to tiptoe towards that sin, that's exactly when the devil grabs you. That's exactly when he puts out his snare, your the bear trap, or whatever you want to call it. That's when he gets you, right? When you don't have understanding and you get too close to him. Again, I think that's why our kids, and I think that's why even us, uh, you know, uh, so many times I talk about our teenagers, even us, uh, we'll get close to sin, and before you know it, we'll be sucked into that thing because we got too close to it. The Bible makes it very clear, and before I go any further, I want to make it very clear tonight. The Bible says just to stay away from it. Just stay away. Don't flirt with it. Don't get close to it. I tell Grant not to touch something. You know what he does? He's touching it. I say no. He looks at me. He touches it. I say no. He looks at me. He touches it. I say no. And I start to get mad. And he takes his hand off it and he goes like this. Uh-huh. And he just looks at me. He gets a little closer until I yell at him, right? And then he'll stand a little bit farther away. And you see what happened? You, you start flirting with it. And then he gets whooped because he's not listening, right? And, and that's what happens in our lives sometimes. Is it, I, well, God, I'm not touching it. God, I'm not doing it. And, and what do we think God is? Do we really think that God is a naive parent and we think that we're tricking him? No, God knows exactly what you're doing. God knows when you're getting close and God knows what you're about to do. And he knows exactly what you're doing. Amen. More than any parent will ever know, God knows what's going on in our minds and in our hearts. And so again, it, it, friends, it's not just the things that we do, but it's the things that we're around and the things that we're incorporating ourselves with that we need to be very sure these are of God. And if they're not of God, get away from it. Get away. And don't ask questions. Just go. Because here's what happens when you get too close. It says this in verse number 10. This woman meets him. She's got a subtle heart. Verse number 11. She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abide not in her house. Uh, verse number 12. Now is she without, now in the streets, and life, and wait in every quarter. So she caught him and kissed him with an impudent face, said unto him, impudent. Uh, it's very interesting if you look up the definition for that, uh, means without respect. Uh, that, that's what that face means. She, she doesn't even care who he is. She, she doesn't care about his family. She doesn't care about the people that love him. She doesn't care what, what he's got to lose. All she cares is what she has to gain. And I'll tell you what, friend, when you talk about the world, the, the world does not care what you've got to lose. She doesn't. The world does not care. It doesn't matter what stature you are. It doesn't matter what your family looks like. It doesn't matter how... Uh, 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 religious your grandparents were the world does not care what you have to lose the world just cares what she's got to gain amen and we understand that as Christians but these kids I'm telling you we've got to be so vigilant with our kids they don't understand this principle the world sells them something yeah you know oftentimes when I when I when I try to make sense of these these things in my head I, I use physical illustrations a car salesman will tell you any car on their lot is the best car that you should be driving amen you gone to a car lot, you've gone car shopping, they've got a reason why you should buy each and every single one of their cars. It doesn't matter if it's a Ford, a Chevy, or a Dodge. It, it doesn't matter. They've got a reason that you should buy it. And you listen to those turkeys. As you, as you begin to explain what you need and what you want, they'll be all over the place selling you that car. And here's why. Because they don't really care what you buy. They just care that they get your money. Amen? Because they've got a, a commission. They, they need to make that money to go home to their families. They don't care what you get out of it. They don't care if it's a wrecked car that's been painted over. They, they don't care what you get. They just want what they get because you bought into it. And again, the world is the same way. The, the, the world is advertising. You need this. You need this. You need this. You want this. You want this to be a part of your life. But then you get it, and it's a piece of junk. And you say, man, what in the world happened? Well, what happened is you just got took for a ride, buddy, right? You, you just... You went where you weren't supposed to, and so now the world's had its way with you, and, and, and that's why your life is the way that it is. You, you, you see it time and time again. I, I know close, personal, family, friends. I, you, you talk all over the spectrum. I know people that have fallen for this trap, and today their lives are 
in pieces, or, or maybe they were in pieces, now they're fixed, but they've had to suffer hardships because they tiptoed around this stuff, and the world sold them something they didn't want. And so understand this, the world is never for you. Even though you think it is, the world is never for you. The world is always out to get you. It's always out to take advantage of you. The Lord, on the other hand, is trying to keep you from those alleys. Now it says this. It says in verse number 13, so she caught him, right? So she caught him, she kissed him, gave him a, a reason right, to stay and some of those different things. Looked at him with an impudent face and said unto him, in verse number 14, I have peace offerings with me, right? And this day have I paid my vows, and therefore came I forth to meet thee, and diligently, diligently to seek thy face, and I found thee, right? And so, man, she's she's really laying out the buttery words, right? The, the butter on top of the popcorn, you gotta add the salt on top, make it real good, right? The good stuff, she's laying it out there. I, I think about the uh, the poor deer, right, as they get lured in by the hunters, right? You nail the potato on the tree, and, and that's what the deer's looking for, I'm making fun of Bruce there, but uh, they're looking for something, right? They want that feed or that salt block, some of those different things. They want it. They come and they get it, and guess what happens? They get it, don't they? They really get it. And, and that's exactly what she's doing. She's laying it all out there, laying the trap so that these people walk in. They keep coming. She's going to keep this young man. Watch what it says in verse number 15. Therefore came forth I to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face, and I found thee. And I have decked my bed with coverings of, uh, of tapestry, with carved works, and fine linen of Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh and aloes and cinnamon. Come, let us make our fill of love until the morning. Let, let, let us solace ourselves with loves. For the good man is not at, uh, at house. He has gone on a long journey. He hath taken a bag of money with him and will come home at the day appointed. And she says, man, I, you've got no reason not to say no, right? I, I've made everything ready for you. It's all good, and you can come and enjoy, and we'll enjoy. He's gone. He's not going to be here to, to do anything. And, and I'm telling you what, when that good man leaves... That's when the trouble comes. We can stop and talk about the woman for a second, not just the young man. The young man was a fool for being around the woman, but the woman was a fool for letting the good man leave, right? Or, or, or not guarding herself while the good man was gone. Hey, listen to this, friend. If the good man, uh, uh, which for this sake of this illustration, will say is the Lord, if, if the good man's not in your life, guess what's going to happen? Uh, you're going to find yourself in these situations just like this woman did, going out and you're going to pervert things and I'm telling you, remove God from the seat where he needs to be, and you'll see destruction ensue after you're in your life. You'll see it. You'll begin to see things fall out of place because, again, the Lord is not where he needs to be in our lives. And so, again, this man's gone, and now she's going to go out and have her way. Uh, verse number 21, with her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. And with the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Uh, here's a verse that, man, I think we need to read 20-something times. Uh, hey, listen, friend, with the words she forced him, meaning the things that she was saying, the things that she was selling, uh, again, was what was tainting that heart inside of him, uh, which, by the way, is the reasons that you and I need to guard our ears and our eyes in such a manner. Uh, you know, everybody wants free college. Everybody wants free health care, <coughs> but it comes at an expense, doesn't it? The world will sell it like it's something great. The world will sell it like there's nothing wrong with it. Why aren't we doing We're dummies for not doing this. But you know what? There's a lot of consequences that come with that. There's a lot of consequences that come with all the different things the world is propagating and selling and putting out there. But you know what? If we're not careful, we're buying right into it. And because he stayed and because he listened, her words worked on him. And he's going to go in. It says this in verse number 22. When he goeth after her straightway. As an ox go, listen to the way that it, it phrases this. This is amazing. He goeth in after her straightway, right? Now watch what it says. As an ox goeth to the slaughter, right? As, as an ox is just dumb. It just walks behind the man leading with the rain, not knowing he's going to be slaughtered on the inside of that gate. Watch this. Or as a fool, the correction of the stocks, right? Or uh, uh, verse number 23, till a dark strike through his liver as a bird uh, hasted to the snare and knoweth not that it has for its life. Hearken unto me now, therefore, O children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. Notice how verse number 25 phrases this. Let not thine heart, what does it say? Decline. Let it not slide, right? You, you start to let that heart slide, and you'll see where it takes you. That's what happens. Your, your heart starts to decline. It starts to slide. It starts off on this... Uh, the, 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 this little trip, right? It's just a little sin. It's just a little thing that I'm going to uh, tinker with or I'm going to fiddle with or, or whatever you call it. And then what happens? You, you start to slide, buddy. And if you've ever slid, you know what I mean when I say slide. You lose your footing and you're gone. 
Uh, there was a, a big dam that was near my house, Hoover Dam, uh, back in Westerville. And there was a big hill on the side of it, and you could go uh, slide down it and different things. But I'll tell you this, when you lost your footing, you were going to find the bottom, whether you wanted to or not, right? It didn't matter what fashion. Uh, you were tumbling, flipping, cartwheeling, whatever you were doing, you were going to hit the bottom of that thing, and you were going to slide. It started out where you had your footing, you knew what you were doing, but you know what? Sure enough, your feet dropped out a bit, you were sliding down that hill. That's exactly what happened. Your heart declines, you start to allow that thing to go down in moral estate. By the way, uh, again, just edifying the words that, that I just said, that's why we keep our hearts in the right conditions. That's why we're making sure that the environment of our heart and the environment of all the things going on in our life is one that cultivates only spiritual things, not anything else. Because what happens is it'll start to decline that heart's estate. It'll start to take that heart and to taint it and to take it down with it. And when that heart declines, that's when some of these different things happen. Verse number 26, for she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. Verse number 26, and we're moving on to chapter number 8. Watch what it says, for she hath cast down many wounded. Notice this, some of them make it out wounded. You notice that? Some of them make it. In other words, like I said a moment ago, some of those families I know, some of those personal friends I know, they, they messed up, they stumbled, something happened. Uh, what it was, we don't need to talk about, but uh, they've gone through something, right? They're down in the dumps, but through the grace of God and, and through his mercy, sometimes they make it back up. You know people like that, right? You know probably situations like that where somebody's fallen and, and really gotten into something, but through God's mercy, they've been brought back up and they might even be fine. They might even be great today. Uh, and the Lord's brought them through and talked to them. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I pray that that's how you are when you learn those lessons. Some are wounded, but many, the Bible says, many of them are dead. Many of them went her way and didn't leave wounded. No, they just straight up died. They didn't make it out there. See, some come through uh, with just some marks on them. Some come through and they're just barely scathed, but some of them, they don't make it out. So for you and me, it, it, it's not a... Uh, a, a test or it's not an ability to discern, man, how much damage am I going to suffer from this thing? It's stay away from it completely. Amen? And, and don't even be tempted by it. Don't even go into it. Why? Because it's not worth dying there. It's not worth dying in that way. And you know what? You'll notice this. When it comes to somebody's life, it doesn't matter how good you've done. It doesn't matter what good you've done. It doesn't matter how long you've done that good. When you do one bad thing, what are you known for? You're known for that bad thing. And you know what? That's where some people die. They die, right? They could have served the Lord their whole life. But that lady gets a hold of them. She takes them into their house. And you know what? They die right there. And they never make it back through. They never make it out. Why? Because they were silly. They let go of all their wisdom. Uh, thy kinswoman understanding and understanding they are, are wisdom thy sister, right? They, they, they cast those ones away. Get away from me. I'm going to do my own thing. And, and there you find them. They're dead. I don't know how many personal friends, and I've not even been saved for the majority of my life, but I don't know how many personal friends I've lost in ministry. And I'm not even an old man. I'm young. And I'm telling you, I've seen people die. Not physically, but I've seen them die. I've seen them tiptoe around the alleys. I've seen them get involved, and they are just straight up dead. Nails in the coffin. They're never coming back. Because they allowed sin to creep into their life. And they will never get back on track because now they've allowed that sin to take root. I told you, and I've told you many times about all those boys that were called to ministry at church camp. I was in a youth group. At one time, there were eight different boys that were called to ministry. Eight different boys that thought that someday they were going to be a preacher. And I can tell you this, I'm the only one. One out of eight. But what happened? Were they not called? I don't know. That's for them to decide. That's between them and the Lord. But I do know this. In each and every one of those scenarios, I can look back and see all the sin. I can see all the different things that derailed them. And guess what? They're not where they ought to be. Why? Because they went, but they didn't make it out wounded. They died. They died in that part of their ministry. They, they died in that part of where the Lord wanted to use them. It's dead, and they can't go back. Some of them have, have, have uh, you know, you, you talk about people... Um, Oh, so I just lost the word. I was at it hardly ever happens, but I lost the word. Um, unqualifying themselves, right? They they they, they dequalify themselves. 
Uh, you talk about an athlete that's gonna run in a race, right? But they inject some juice in their arm before they do it. Guess what? You disqualify, right? You're done, buddy. You're not gonna run this race. Well, when it comes to the Lord's work, there are some things that disqualify us. Amen? There are some things that do. But we've got to be pure, otherwise we just can't serve in some of the different capacities uh, that the Lord has called us to serve in. Now, I wish it wasn't so, and I wish I could look you in the face and tell you you can do and you can be whatever you want to be. But there are some different regulations that God puts out there that says, no, you're disqualified from that position. That's why the Bible gives us the qualifications of a preacher and a deacon in 1 Timothy in chapter number 3. It walks through and lets us know what a preacher ought to be. And guess what? I think we ought to hold preachers to that standard. Amen. And then it goes on from the preacher. It goes right down to the deacon. And guess what? Deacon, uh, if somebody wants to be a deacon in the future, we hold those deacons to those standards. Why? Because we believe that somebody can be disqualified from the Lord's work. And those boys, some of those men that surrendered and said that they were called to ministry are flat out disqualified because of some of the things that have happened in their lives. That's what I'm saying. It's not up for you to interpret how far or how much you can get away with. You just don't go near it. Amen? Because you never know when you're going to get caught. You never know when something's going to happen. You know, it might go right for a while. You ever did that as a kid? You got away with something, so you kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it until you took too much, right? Or until you did too much, or until you... Uh, it might be the chocolate chip cookies in the cabinet, right? You take one, take two, take three, take four. Then dad comes back, half the pack's gone. Something's wrong, right? You get caught because you got greedy and you took too much. That's what happens in our lives because we're just people. And then it says this in chapter number eight, verse number one. We're nearly done. We're going to read a few more verses. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? It carries on this same theme of, of wisdom and understanding. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth on top of high places by the way. Uh, in the places by the, the past, she cried at the gates and entering the city at the coming of the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is the son of man. Now, now notice this. The Bible talks about a couple different women. First of all, in chapter number 7, it's talking about that woman that will lead you down the wrong path. But then it, it talks about wisdom and understanding, right? Being that woman. And again, it, it's using that same word that, that she or her or that woman, right, is crying at the gate. She's She's there screaming the whole time. Hey, that's not right. That's sin, right? Don't go that way. Don't do this. Don't do that. And I think sometimes in life, people say, why did God allow this to happen to me? Why did God allow this? Why did God, why did God, why? And they've got this list of charges against God. And the whole time, the word of God's been screaming to them, don't do it. Don't go there. Don't let it be a part of your life. God's always been saying it. God's always said it. God's word has always contained it. So how can we say God never told us? How can we say, how, how God did you allow this to happen? How can we say that when God established in his word, before you and I were born, these principles? You see, we're so quick to judge God for the one time in our lives that he allows us to get what, he, what we deserve. And we forget to thank him for all the other times that he spared us from all the sin. I don't know about you, but I've had sin, and God has been merciful to me. God has been graceful, and God has forgiven me of that sin and allowed me to get through that sin. But you know what? That doesn't mean I go right back to it. That doesn't mean, oh, that's okay. Okay, why well, go? That, that's not what that means. It doesn't mean that you go right back to it. It means that you learn and you move on. You stay away from it. God's been saying the same thing. And by the way, the message never changes, does it? The same thing, the same thing, the same thing. Uh, what did I see in the in the uh, in the the YouTube? I saw a YouTube video about a uh, uh, old uh, Star Lord or whatever. What's that superhero? He's got the star. I think it's Star Lord. That Chris Pratt. You guys know who I'm talking about? The movie actor. Anyway, he's a big time actor in Hollywood. And uh, some some news uh, 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 person picked up that his church was anti LGBTQ. Well, that's not okay in Hollywood, right? You, you, you can't be a big-time actor and be in big films if you're anti-LGBTQ. And so he came out and posted this big social media post about, oh, no, my church is okay with everybody. My church loves everybody. My church and my church and my church. And, and he went through a whole explanation. And as far as I know, his pastor saw every word of that and never retorted. And listen, friend, God's word never changes. Amen. It, it stays the same no matter how far the world goes. No matter how far everything else goes, God's word stays the same. The message has always been the same. And so when destruction comes and all those different things, don't you dare blame God. You need to know that you walked away from God's word. And you walked away from the principles that God set out. God says, doesn't wisdom cry? Doesn't she lay at the gates and yell to you? 
Verse number five. Oh, you simple, understand wisdom, as uh, uh, you fools, and be of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to him that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, in knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that need to be desired are not compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way, in the froward mouth, do I hate. I, I tell you what, man, that is so true. And God is speaking those things in our ear. He, he's speaking to us every Sunday he speaks, every Wednesday he speaks. God, through his word and your personal studies, he speaks. And all his words are righteousness. All his words are right. All his words are good. All his words are faithful. And yet we'll still turn to the world. And yet we'll still, God's never let us down, but still we think that just maybe this once, the world will come through for me. I, God has always been righteous. God has always been true. His words have always been good. And then he says this, receive my instruction, not silver. Receive my instruction, not the things of the world. Receive my instruction, for wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may, uh, may be desired are not even co uh, compared to it. It's, it's better than any riches that you and I can have. Wisdom is better than all of it. Uh, you know, that, that, that's saying a lot. There's a lot of people out there that have a whole bunch of things. They've got it all, as some would say. They've got money, they've got cars, they've got houses and possessions. But you know what? The Bible says that you and I, that have wisdom, you and I, that have instruction, are richer than all of them. Why? We're not going to face the same hardships. We're not going to go through all the heartache of all the different things that come with obeying the world. Why? Because we've got God's wisdom. We've got the understanding of that wisdom. And most importantly, we've got the Holy Spirit of God inside of us. Amen? Leading us and guiding us and sealing us. We don't have to go through all these things. Wisdom is more important than all of those. And then in verse number 13, and this is our last point, and we're done. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride and arrogancy in the evil way or the, in the froward mouth do I hate. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What does it mean to fear God? Does it mean to be afraid of him and to shake in your boots every time you think of him? No. That's not what it means. To fear God means to have a healthy reverence of him, to have respect of him. You think of your daddy, you've got a healthy amount of respect for your dad, right? Or at least you should, amen. You have a healthy uh, fear of him. But, but here's what the Bible says. For the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And here's what we'll understand. We've got a heavenly father that's laid out the right path, and we've got a world that tries to pervert that. And here's what we understand. The fear of God is to hate anything that is not of God. We hate all that evil. We hate all those different things. Again, not the people. We just hate the sin. And see, that sometimes as religious people is where we get tripped up as we hate the person for the sin. I don't hate anybody in this world. And to hate somebody means that you don't care if they go to heaven or hell. I, listen, I'm concerned about every single soul that's ever lived on this planet. I'm concerned with all of them. I don't hate any person. But you know what? I do hate sin. I hate it. I hate that sin. I hate it. Why? Because it perverts all of God's law. It perverts all of God's plan. And again, it's what has allowed us to walk through all the different things that we've had to walk through as a consequence of that sin. We hate sin. Don't, don't get me wrong, friend, but you know what? We'll love the sinners. Amen? We'll love the sinners. I'll say this in the same breath that I just said that, uh, you know, he came out and said, my church loves all, my church does this. And, hey, this church loves all, but that doesn't mean that we accept all the sin. The church loves all. God loves all people. We love everybody. Friend, there, there, there's not the wrong person you can bring to church. See, sometimes I don't think we say that enough. You can't bring the wrong person into this house. I've heard people say, well, if I showed up to church, the, the, the pillars would fall and the whole thing would you know, catch fire. And, and What do you think God is? And the, the church loves you. God loves you. God loves all people. It's just the sin that we're not going to allow to be a part of our worship. We're not going to allow that to be a part of God's plan. 
We're not going to accept those things. And so again, we love all people, but again, it's the sin that we don't love. It's the sin that we hate and we despise. And that's what you and I have got to be so keen on, because if we're not, then we're spreading the wrong message. And that is that God hates you because of your sin. And God does not hate anybody. Uh, <laughs> hell was made for the devil and his angels. Not for any man that's ever been gay. Not for any man that's ever been a murderer. Not for any man that's ever stole for the devil and his angels. God loves all people. He came that all would be saved. And so we need to love all people and, again, share that love the same way. But, again, the, the whole, if you're going to, you know, boil everything together and, and say, man, well, what is the point for tonight? The point is, don't go near sin, amen, and, and rather give ear to understanding, give ear to wisdom, because sin is never worth the trip. What's that old saying? Sin takes you farther than you want to go, keeps you longer than you want to stay, and costs you more than you want to pay, right? That's exactly what sin does. Farther than you want to go, longer than you want to stay, and more than you want to pay. Every single time. Here's what sin is. Sin is devastating. It is devastating. It's death. And we need to avoid it at all costs. Don't even walk into the alleys. Stay completely clear of it. Give ear to wisdom and understanding. Amen? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's stand. We're out of time. Lord, love you again. Need you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, you, you give warning in chapter number 7. Walking in wisdom versus walking in the ways of the world. And verse, or I'm sorry, chapter number 8, Lord, you go right into what wisdom is and how you give us wisdom. And Lord, thank you that that wisdom cries. Thank you that your word is loud. Thank you, God, that, that you speak and you don't leave it to our understanding. You don't leave it to our ability to find the right way. But Lord, you laid it out there for us. And God, I pray in our lives that we'd not be deceived. I pray that we'd not be confused. Lord, when it comes to this sin, when it comes to the different things in life that will let in, help us not to be confused, but rather to know the way and to ponder our path and to know exactly where we're going and why we're going to that place. And so, Lord, with that being said, lead us, please, with wisdom and lead us with understanding. And to him, as in chapter number seven, the Bible refers to him that has no understanding. God, to him that has no understanding, impart understanding. To him that doesn't know, God, we pray that you take your word and learn. We pray for our kids. We pray for our children, our teenagers. We pray, Lord, that if they don't know, we pray that you would teach us all that you can do. And we pray, Lord, that you would commit those principles and those different uh, things from your word. We pray that you commit those to their heart that when sin comes, and when sin knocks, Lord, that they would not be home. They wouldn't be listening, but they'd be so busy with you. And so, Lord, guide us. Lord, and guard us and keep us from this disgusting, putrid world. And God, help us always to worship you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe you've got something you need to pray about. Talking about wisdom and just doing the right thing in God's eyes, not our eyes. Maybe you've got something. Maybe you've got somebody to pray for. I don't know about you, but I pray for my boys. I do. Think that I follow the Bible and I'm going to try to do that for my life, but I pray the same thing for my boys. Maybe you've got somebody that you need to lift up. You say, Man, I've got kids and I know that they're walking the wrong way. I need to commit them to you, Lord. Whatever it is, would you come? This altar is open. It's a place for you to talk to the Lord. And just get those things right with Him and allow Him to deal with you. So here's what I'm going to do I'm going to bow and I'm going to pray. And I've got things I need to pray about. I've got things I'm going to commit to the Lord. I'm praying for my boys. And I just pray as I bow that you come and get those things right with him. So I'm going to bow. You come. It's open now. share just one last thought with you before I let you go and that is this, my prayer for you is that you hear, amen that, that, that's simply what my prayer is for tonight 
The Bible says, let them hear, right? Let us hear, not, not just to not just to let these words fall over us, but to hear what God is saying. And here's why. Because when we hear those things, they make a difference in what we do. And there's been a lot of things in my life I wish I would have just listened to what somebody was saying rather than do it my way and find out it doesn't work. Uh, silly illustration, Grandpa tried to teach me electric. I used to get so annoyed with my grandpa because he would talk and talk and talk and over-explain. And like, Man, just let me do. And you know what? I put a, a dryer next to a washer and I didn't have a ground and that washing machine casing became the ground for that dryer and uh, guess what happened? I won't go any farther. I wish I would have listened when grandpa was telling me about electric and I probably would have known how a three-way works. Amen? So if I had to listen, I would have learned. And here's the, the, the principle. If you listen when God speaks, then we don't have to face the hardships that are to come. And so tonight, hear, just hear. You don't have to hear my voice, but hear God's words and be in your Bible. No sound wisdom. It will make all the difference in our lives. Let's pray and we'll be dismissed. Brother Bruce, would you make our prayer for us, please? And a gracious Holy Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come to your house and worship you. Pray for each and every one that's here. Just as you listen, even as they try to make this plan. Pray for babies throughout the remainder of the week. And let them bless the Sunday. Pray for those unable to attend. Pray that you'll just lift them up and bring them back to us. And pray for those that are on the prayer request that you'll just meet each and every one of them and pray for those that are struggling. Pray that you'll just continue to bless and guide and direct in all things. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're dismissed. <coughs>